Welcome to the show, though, man. Welcome, welcome, you, welcome. Sports and Hip Hop with DJ it, Mad Max. You already know it's an honor to have you here. Congratulations on the new project, Aura 3. You've Thank been you. working really, really hard. I saw you on Instagram. I thought it was amazing, that performance that you put on, which you were performing my city. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. We just was just in the studio, just, you know, fooling off. Mm-hmm. And it just, you know, decided to throw that up. So, Towards yeah. the end of that clip, I noticed that you were starting to perform Day and Night by Kid Cudi. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We were just goofing off, and like, yeah, it just um, the thing. Why, why I cut it there is because I didn't know the words. I forgot the words, so I was like, yeah, just cut it there because I don't know what I'm doing at this point. You like yeah. covering songs? Say again. You like covering a lot of songs from other artists? Yeah, I mean, it's not like you know, it, it's kind of one of those hobby things. On TikTok is where that really took off for me. I do that on TikTok a lot. And that's like one of those things that people really know me for on TikTok. But like outside of that, I don't really do it that often. Um, I mean, I put up one video recently, like a few months back. Uh, I did like uh, Sugar Brockhampton and um, her um, could have been kind of like mashup cover. And that did really well. So maybe that's something that people do like from me. I just got to kind of get, you know, tap into it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, before, before we get into the new album, I want to get into your background and originally living in North Dakota and then going yeah, to Georgia. So, yeah, common misconception. Like I get I get that a lot, but I was just born there. Like I wasn't really raised oh, okay. there or I didn't really do a lot of um growing up there. It was more so just like the first few years of my life is I mean, of course I was born there and my not my dad was military, so it's kind of like Air Force and we just, you know, they're bouncing around. They had my brother in Guam <laughs> and then went to North Dakota. And then finally we landed in Georgia and that's where I did a lot of my upbringing. So, yeah. You started out on SoundCloud. That's where you really started getting your listeners and your fan base going. How do you think you were able to start that fan base? Because there's so many artists on SoundCloud and now I feel as though Instagram is the new SoundCloud because everyone's taking control of that, posting their own vis- visuals, trying to go viral. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, um, SoundCloud was a big help for my career. I, I, of course, I had been doing, you know, music for a while before that, just kind of doing like, um, you know, talent shows and showcases, just, just as much as I could as I was growing up, getting like my bearings under me, trying to figure out like if I really wanted to do this or not. But SoundCloud was like a means to, you know, kind of dabble in like experimenting with like sounds and figuring out what do people like me for? What do I have to say as an artist? And like, um, I found out through a breakup randomly that like me venting and trans being transparent in my music was like kind of therapy for a lot of people and not only a lot of people, but myself included. And that's kind of like, kind of what snowballed into like me developing a fan base and then uh, getting the attention of some people that was already bigger on this, on the platform on SoundCloud, like uh, the selection guys and um, uh, Joe K, Sango, Esther, you know, those guys that were like, kind of dominating that space at the time um getting into that circle and then of course it just kind of happened after that you know so your name is LA but it's an actually an acronym for every life has an ending yeah yeah Random. where did that acronym speak to you where did that acronym come from um I think at the time like growing up I just man I just I, I went through so many different names and I just like was like one day I need to st- find a name and stick to it. <laughs> and I think I was in high school and like just writing down like lyrics. Um, Cause I used to just write just to write sometimes, you know, whether it'll be a verse to like rapping like a lunch battle or something <laughs> like at lunchtime with some friends or something, or just like just writing a song. Um, you know, I, I knew I wanted to do music pretty early on in my life. So it was like just writing lyrics. And I think the words, every life has an ending kind of just popped up in one of those those lyrics and I um, I just like the way it looked on paper and you know for what it represented just kind of like to live every day like it's your last and not like focus you know so much on like you know being you know scared to do things just kind of like gunning for what you want to do your dreams and all that type of stuff it just kind of meant something to me and I just kind of it just it just stuck you know um a lot of people say El Hey though, <laughs> or, or Eli, or I've heard it all, but it's just like, you know, it is what it is. As long as you know how to spell it, mm-hmm. you know, it's all good. 
Have you ever had deep thoughts about the acronym since COVID came about and all these young artists that have been passing away to gun violence, such as Pop Smoke, and even yeah. looking at artists like DMX? I mean, he's only 50. He should have lived longer, way longer than 50 years old. It's such For a sure. tragic passing. Sure. Do, but do you ever think deeply about that name more since of everything that's been going on in the world? Yeah, more recently, um, because it hit home for me, you know, I, I, I was in the hospital last year, you know, the end of last year, I had um, some things going on with my kidney and, you know, just some other things that like I just dealt with um, the end of last year and the beginning of this year, where I was, you know, there's a period, you know, on in the hospital bed where I was like, is this it? You know what I mean? I had I had that realization at one point. Um, and thank, you know, God, it wasn't a long period of thinking, but it was like one of those, it was a split moment where I had to ask the nurse, like, is this it? Like, is, am I going to be, am I leaving this earth, you know, at this point? And I never thought that like, I would have to, I, you know, just, I don't know, thinking back on that moment, it's just kind of like, wow, like I was really there and I really thought that that was the end, you know? Um, so yeah, at this stage in my life, I do, you know, I, things have kind of shifted. My perspective has shifted, especially on my name alone. And, you know, just to kind of like move forward and, you know, head down and just work, 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 try to get the most I can out of the days I'm here, you know, and um, rest in peace to DMX and, and, you know, all the guys, you know, that lost their lives tragically before, you know, it was time. Um, you hate to see stuff like that, especially when, you know, guys are so talented, you know, and, and I mean, but, you know, they serve, they serve as inspiration to many people and myself included to just, you know, continue doing what we're doing and trying to make an impact on people's lives, you know? Being a talented musician, you can also rap. I heard it on the albums, of course. <laughs> so I, tried, who, I, I want to know who, what rappers you looked up to. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like my, the beginning of my career, I was, I was mainly a rapper. Like I didn't really sing at all. It's kind of weird. Cause it, I, in the beginning of like, we're out, figured I wanted to do music I was like I'm just gonna rap and then it went to I'm just gonna sing and then it was like all right let me find a balance of both so that's kind of where I'm at now where recently I kind of feel like I've been more doing more singing but I kind of like feel like the next project I'll probably try to do a little bit more rap who knows um but yeah going growing up it was um you know I was a big fan of Pharrell because I felt like he, he could tap into both both things you know he rapped and then he sang and uh, Kanye was another one I grew up listening to. Lupe Fiasco was another. Um, yeah, like the guys that kind of like really was trying to set themselves apart because it, when I was growing up, it was like just gangster rap, you know? And that was like a huge part of the culture of hip hop at the time. And I kind of found myself, you know, being drawn to the guys that was just trying to be themselves, you know, and, and not really trying to conform to that lifestyle or trying to conform to a certain audience it was just like I'm just being me and that's kind of like what I was drawn to and I think that is a testament of where I am in my career at this point like I don't really try to set trends or kind of be trendy I just do what I do you know and I think that's because of what I grew up listening to and the guys I was kind of inspired um, by growing up you know so yeah. Pharrell was a big influence and in He's often overlooked as a rapper. If you just can remember on Snoop Dogg's Drop It Like It's Hot, he could really oh, spit, yeah. he could really rap. Nice dude, what's some nice dreams? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that verse. That verse is really good. <laughs> it, it definitely was. It, I, 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 just talk me through getting your deal with Atlantic and now being on Motown. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, 2015, I, you know, the first Aura came out, mm -hmm. Um, which is, you know, the first EP that kind of kicked it off for me. In That's on SoundCloud. Like, yeah, it's on SoundCloud. So I put that out on SoundCloud and it did really, really well. It did a lot of um, good numbers for me early on. And that kind of like drawn it, that got the attention of like so many different labels. So I was taking meetings left and right, um, trying to figure out like what the deal was going to be and who was, who, what, what home I was going to, you know, land on it. Ultimately, I had a conversation with um, Kehlani and she was a big influence of kind of like me going to Atlantic and trying to figure out that because she was already there. Mm -hmm. And I um, just ended up going there and, you know, it, you know, it didn't really, you know, when you have like such dreams and aspirations growing up and, you know, you see the labels and you see the glitz and the glam, it feels like it's going to be one thing. 
then you get there and then it's just, you know, it's totally the opposite or it's not really the, it's what you thought it would be. And that was kind of my experience with Atlantic. It just kind of like, you know, I got there and it just wasn't, it just didn't really move as fast as I kind of wanted it to. And with Aura, I felt like it was a great project and I felt like we should get on the label and, you know, they should take Aura because it was already had legs up under, it was already moving, people loved it. And I thought, you know, we should just kind of revamp it and maybe add a couple more songs to it and then just put it back out. Um, but they wanted a whole new project. So I ended up doing that. That took forever. <laughs> it just kind of like after Aura, it kind of lost its momentum, you know, and I, my momentum in my career. And I felt like it was, you know, once I put out the next project, you know, with them, the first project with them, it kind of felt like at that point, um, Bryson's Trap Soul had kind of came and came and went and it did its thing. And, you know, it kind of like was, I felt like people, like all my peers that I knew and would, you know, had these great conversations with going, you know, going into Atlantic, they were miles and miles ahead of me. And I was just kind of like, you know, what's the situation here? And those people were all in different areas. And I just felt like maybe, you know, it's the situation I'm in, you know? So I, I kind of just try to tough it out. I had a couple more albums with them after that. So I just did those projects, <laughs> honestly, just to kind of like get them done and, of course, but at the end of the day, I, you know, I still stay tr true to myself and try to, you know, serve my fans the best I could. But at the end of the day, I was just mainly like, man, like I'm waiting for the day that I can kind of get off of this, <laughs> this label and, and figure out what's next. My idea though, after it was just kind of got kind of go independent, you know, I was, I put a, a song or two out, you know, as an independent artist. And that was my first taste of independency or in, is that word? Is that a word? I think that's the word. I don't know. We can make but, it a word. <laughs> yeah, we can make it a word. We'll yeah. make it a word. So yeah, it's my first taste of being independent, and I saw some great num. Not yeah, I saw great numbers streaming wise, but I saw great numbers financially from just singles. And I was like, this is great. I could just do this. And then um, you know, Sean Barron over at Motown, he reached out, and um, you know, I, I was kind of apprehensive at first, but. My, my manager told me, he was like, do you want to make money or do you want to make an impact on like culture and, and go that extra mile? And, you know, I never did this for the money. That was never the, you know, the beginning of this wasn't ever about that. So um, if, if I could take another shot at trying to further my career and get to the next level, then instead of staying at a point where, you know, I'm just making money just to get by then. I felt like that was necessary for me to do. So I, I signed with Motown last year, the end of last year. And surprisingly, like I haven't had any complaints so far. It's been really, really nice. You know, they've been very, very welcoming. And, you know, I've been treated very, very fairly over there so far. And I mean, it's a testament to what you guys, what, what you have seen so far. You know, I've put out some great videos so far and then or three just came out. And that's doing really, really well. So yeah, I, I got no complaints at this point. You know, no, you had to do what was best for you. And at the end of the day, from what I've seen, I've met so many artists from Atlantic, and it's. I think that label has just so many artists. They really can't yeah. stay focused on just one, or if there's one in particular that, sure. that they can move. There's so many artists they have their eyes on over yeah. there. I think that's why Motown is probably the better option for you because now they'll put more attention on you and you'll get For to where sure. you want to go. And not, yeah. And, and not to cut you off, but I mean, like Atlantic has great um, artists, but they tend to cater towards the bigger artists on the label. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some of the smaller artists and there is a lot of them <laughs> under <Yeah>. Atlantic, <laughs> you know, they tend to get overlooked because, you know, they're worried about Bruno or they're worried about Cardi or they're worried about Kehlani or, you know, these, the, the guys that's way bigger, and then those guys at the bottom are just, they just get overstepped. And I was one of those artists. Um, and I saw that early on. So, you know, it was one of those things it's like, it's just a matter of time for me to kind of like, do what I gotta do here and then kind of move on. So yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you go through life, you learn experiences and you learn that, hey, that wasn't that great of an experience. So Motown is the right one for me. Let's ride this out. It's going sure. well so far. You're building even more of a fan base as I've seen on YouTube. People say that you can sing a phone book and they'd listen to you and be in awe. <laughs> you know, the YouTube that's comments funny. are always wild. <laughs> right. That's hilarious. Yeah, no, I see some funny comments. I saw one the other day. It's like LA's voice sounds like Dove 
feathers falling from the sky or some <laughs> some shit like that. I was like, what in the world? But yeah, no, I mean, it, it's cool to to have people appreciate what you do. And, and surprisingly, I don't get a lot of hate. You know, I, I tend That's to get good. the more nicer comments about what I do. And, you know, I can appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good that you don't get any hate right now. I love this the visual from my city. You're on a golf course. That's unique. Yeah, I mean, um, the, that was the treatment I was sent. It was uh, my creative director. Uh, his name is C. Wu. He, uh, he had this idea about this this golf, and, you know, I was just like, what? <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, all right, if you say so. But it was supposed to be more than that. Like, they wanted, like, a horse in it. It was, like, all this type of stuff that we wanted in the video. But, you know, COVID has been very, like, you know, making things limited limiting our kind of resources and things of that nature and then you got to pay for like people to get tested on site and all this different stuff that just costs so much money so we weren't able to do all that we wanted but i'm happy with what we did get to get to do you know during covid especially the quarantine i saw that you were going on ig live you were singing for your fans and going on youtube was that your own therapy during that time uh yeah, more so just kind of like boredom, to be honest. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't necessarily, um, I think for me, my therapy just kind of, what I use as therapy at this point in time is just probably um, video games. <laughs> you know, just play video games and just relax um, with my girl or, you know, just watch a movie or something. But at the end of the day, it's not really like one of those things that like, I feel like I'm in a happy place. I'm gonna get a place right now. So it's not, I'm not really like looking for therapy. I'm just, when I'm bored, I just do stuff for the fans. And you know, that's pretty much it, you know? You're a big studier of the game. You've, I'm sure you've studied the greats. If there was a 90s R&B song that you could cover or even remix, retcon as they say, what would it be? What would be in your mind? Because 90s had some gems. 90s, you know what? I can't really think of one right now. Um, I know like the two, like the two thousands, not R and B was kind of like where I like really started paying attention. I was born in 1990. So it's kind of like, mm. that was like, you were, were kind of young. At that I was point. watching Lion King and Aladdin and yeah. stuff like that. You know, I wasn't really paying attention to like who's having sex in R and B songs. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I wasn't really in that, that mo I was like power Rangers and, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and stuff. Um, but 2000s was where I kind of like was like, okay, yeah, this is kind of cool. Um, and that's when I got into like Cisco and like Drew Hill, like Avant and like Music Soul Child, and, you know. Ashanti. Guys. Ashanti, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, all those people, you know. But um, yeah, Unleash the Dragon, Cisco, anything off of there was like, I think that was 2000. So that could technically count, you know, mm -hmm. who knows. Um, but anything off of there, like, is like, that's like one of my favorite albums. So that, That's a classic. See, you know, you know your stuff. That's important. That's why it reflects in your music. You study the greats. You're going to reflect what you I study. I try, man. And that's, it goes past the music too. You know, I, you know, growing up, I used to just watch a bunch of concert footage and watch how people, you know, act on stage and movements they make and things of that nature and try to reflect that in the, in the mirror as well. Like when I was just a kid, teenager, very, very corny stuff, but it comes, you know, I do it now on stage. So it's kind of like funny how it kind of circle around. So now from watching your other artists that you saw on YouTube or whatever platform may have been in the concerts, how did that help you in performing at, let's say Coachella? Uh, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Like, you know, the guys snake hips, they, we did a record together with, uh, her and, um, drum. And they reached out and asked if I wanted to, you know, come on stage with them and and, and perform that record. Um, in those particular situations, it's roughly 40,000 people in the crowd. <laughs> so it's like, it's not really a wrong way to do it. You know, you could kind of go on stage and sneeze and walk off and people would be like, oh my God, you know, they're just drunk having a good time anyway. So it was just more so just go out there and just scream as loud as I could and just like, be as energetic as I could to kind of like get the crowd uh, engaged. But um, I, I find like the the hundred people, like when it's a hundred people in the crowd, you know, those are when those kind of like things have to come into play. You have to really figure out like how to work that 
crowd? Because it's a lot harder to get a, a smaller number of people engaged than it is a larger amount of people, you know, um, in terms of like my experiences. So, yeah. <laughs> I bet you're looking forward to getting back out on that stage. Once everything is fine and opening back up, because I know artists are depressed right now that they can't. I know that some of them are sneaking it. Right. But right. those big it's stages, tough. it's difficult. It's tough, man. And and a lot of us, you know, um, you know, we a lot of artists, we get our money, you know, a large, a large part of our part of our, you know, income comes from touring. So um, yeah, I mean, luckily I, I didn't have to struggle, you know, during, during, um, you know, I've been doing this long enough where I'm able to sustain myself a little bit, but yeah, man, I, I felt for the kind of like artists that just started and, you know, they're just starting to get their wings under them and, and get that money from that, those tours, you know, it, it was, it was tough, you know, and yeah, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. You know, I, I especially with or three coming out, man, like, and the traction it's been getting, I kind of feel like those, those rooms will get bigger for me and I'm, I'm excited to see mm -hmm that come into to play, you know, so. For the fans and the listeners right now, what is LA's aura? What is the definition of your aura? Uh, that's interesting to uh, ask. I mean, I mean, I, we had this concept early on, like me and the label where we were going to do like this um, questionnaire and then, you know, at the end of the questionnaire, the fan will get the color of the aura, you mm -hmm. know, at the very end. Um, I don't know why we didn't do that. It's a really good idea. Um, but I mean, like, I think my aura is, you know, pretty, pretty much just chill, pure. I think it's pretty pure. You know, I think it's laid back. You know, I don't, whenever, any, when anyone meets me, I don't really ever hear them say anything negative about the experience. You know, I, I tend to get, you know, you know, I met LA is very humble and very nice and, you know, easygoing. And all, all, those are all traits. Like I want people to leave, you know, meeting me saying, you know, so um, I just try to give people, you know, the experience of how I would want to be treated, you know, I'm no different than anyone else, I don't think, you know, I, I, I tend to tend to try to tell myself that, but then you get like a mob of people like at the end of your show asking for autographs and taking pictures and stuff and you feel <laughs> kind of like weird about it, but <laughs> at the end of the day, like I'm just, you know, a guy that makes music and just wants to kind of like share my experiences and, and try to be there, you know, for people that are going through similar experiences like myself. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, to sum it up, yeah, I think, I mean, it would be, I would hope it would be pure, you know, it'd be a nice looking blue aura, you know? Yep. Fun fact, first song off the album featuring Rick Ross, you've also worked with Wale. When did you start building the connections with the MMG artists? Man, uh, Interesting enough, like it was probably around like 2012. This was a long time ago. Like I've been around them for a while. And um, I think they went on tour. It was like an MMG tour in 2012. And I was able to go to a few shows. <clears throat> I know um, Ross's manager at the time, his name was Gucci Pucci. And I used to um, kind of hang out with him along with uh, my manager. They grew up together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was, I was around them pretty often. I, I seen like Khaled in the beginning. I seen like um you know Wale and Meek in the beginning um Wale of course you know he did his thing before that but um but yeah yeah um and Wale kind of came in 2018 like I had been around Wale but I had never talked to him before and then like years down the line he called me one day and was just like he called my A&R's phone and then he gave me the phone <laughs> and was just like, yo, if you never, if you ever need anything, let me know. And then we exchanged numbers and yeah, I mean, cool guy. We play games online sometime and you know, it's all good, but it's been a while that that relationship has been brewing for a minute and um, yeah, cool guys. A hundred percent. An interesting question that I have for you here today is, why is it different when two R&B artists link up in the studio? Because when two rappers get together, if they're actually rapping, they want to out bar each other, go bar for bar. Yeah. How's it different from when R&B singers get in the studio and collaborate on track? Honestly, man, like I, I don't have many experiences with um, R&B artists, like, you know, working with R&B artists. And I think that's the problem I have with R&B in general is like, there's not enough, like, camaraderie and unity in, in it you know it's like very like a selfish um genre you know people like to kind of like stay in their lane and 
um, not affiliate themselves with another. You know, I I, I said this on Power 106 of like a couple of years ago, like I would love to see a Black and Bryson, you know, concert, you know, I've never seen that. Why has no one seen that? You know, why hasn't anyone put those two together on a tour or like a show? I've never seen it before. And it's like, you know, I just think it's one of those things like, especially the male R&B acts, you know, I think it's one of those things like people just need to sit us all down and say, hey man, like you should work with this guy. You should work with this guy. Why don't you two go on tour? Why don't you three go on tour? Um, but I think at the end of the day, it has a lot to do with egos, you know, and pride and things of that nature. I don't suffer from that. So it's like, I don't really care if one person's bigger than me. Like, I'm just kind of like, I feel like it's enough money and enough fans in the world to everybody could be feed their family and do what they do. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, yeah, I don't really know. It's, it's a very interesting thing because you see a lot of camaraderie in rap and in hip hop. Uh, but less about less in R&B. You don't really see like, you know, black hanging out with Brent Fiaz and smoking LJ or like, you know, like it's just it's just those it's just one of those things you just don't see. It's very rare. And, and I don't know. It kind of baffles me that like why it is that way. But uh, yeah, very weird. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you made an important point, point there for people to really dissect and it's true you never see tours like that where two r&b artists get together especially in the male side mm -hmm. album covers you take them very seriously why yeah. was this the album cover for or three um man i just any album i put out i i want everything to mean something to me um and or three was of course no different i i wanted to of course you know when we did the you know the illustration i kind of wanted to figure out what are what's things that mean something to me and one thing was like my you know my my blackness you know my who i am as just me you know and, and we kind of was able to illustrate that through just having the afro you know what i mean that was like a big thing for me to have the fro on the cover and then you know next thing is like what what the butterfly meant to me you know when it came to you know the Atlantic situation, you know, at the end of that, I thought I was done. You know, I, I was either going to be independent or I thought I was just kind of fall to the wayside and, and, and not really do music that often anymore. Um, Cause you know, when you go through things like that, you feel like you failed. You feel like, you know, it, it didn't measure up to the success that you wanted it to measure up to. And, you know, I kind of felt like the butterfly was a representation of like, even through all that, even through the hard circumstances that I had to go through, not feeling, you know, like a hundred percent, you know, I lived up to my potential a hundred percent, like all these different things that weighed on my brain mentally, you know, was, you know, the cocoon, like I was just in there, you know, and the fire that I had to endure. And then I still came out or three, you know, with this butterfly with the fire, just kind of represented like even through the fire, I still was able to evolve and get to that next level. And then even, you know, the, the flowers on there as well, like it meant a lot just because of what they do and the representation behind it. Um, it's a national Korean flower and um, called Rose of Sharon. It's like, I, I don't know how to pronounce the, the way they pronounce it, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, the, it's, the flower, it's the national Korean flower because, you know, they made it to where it's like, this flower is very like, it's really like, hardy like it's like willing to persevere it's willing to bloom in like the worst conditions you know what I mean and it's like I know that's hard to kind of I, I mix that up a bit but yeah like it represented me you know everything on that cover represented me as a person and I felt like you know when you see it you see just a beautiful piece of art you know but at the end of the day it means so much more you know mm -hmm. yeah or three was a another level for you you mentioned get into the next level. What is the next level from here? Uh, filling those rooms up, man. Filling, um, you know, on my last tour, I was able to uh, sell out a few shows, but I want to, I want to sell out a whole show, a whole tour, you know, I want to make sure that like all these rooms are filled from top to bottom. And, you know, we continue to just elevate and, you know, push the culture forward. And, and I just want to, you know, develop a cult fan base where, you know, no matter what I decide to put out, people really love and, and, and support, you know, and that's kind of like any artist's dream. So, you know, accolades like 
Grammys and charting on Billboard, all of that stuff is cool. But if I just have like a great fan base that will support me through thick and thin, then that's that's my next level. You know, I'm trying to get at. And I think I'm on the track to doing that, you know, so. I believe so. From the YouTube comments to people on Instagram, you do have a dedicated, loyal fan base. And that's all you need. For sure. Definitely. Because, you, because then you can, you can survive even if Motown yeah. didn't work out. You know what I mean? Right. Like, just yeah, make you know. sure that foundation is good. If the foundation's there, then, you know, everything around could fall. But that foundation, you know, will still be there. So building that is is what I, you know, ultimately, that's the journey i'm on right now so yeah, definitely you're on the right path man la is there anything else you'd love to tell my audience here today uh or three That's out. Right. <laughs> streaming platforms everywhere you know um get on there holla at me on any socials at la e l h a e tell me what your favorite songs are you know join the community of uh la fans and supporters and family and yeah, I mean, I'm happy that you had me on, Matt. No doubt. Yeah. You, you know, you're always welcome, man. Keep working hard. Keep pushing the culture forward. Keep creating great R&B because that's what it is. It's Thank you, buddy. great R&B, man. And I, I want you to enjoy the rest of your day. Or three is in the rotation up here. Yes, Keep sir. Doing you, man. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate no it. You too, I man. Feel. Take care. Stay right. safe, man. Yes, sir. Yeah.